With 8 billion people and counting needing food, we need to look to alternatives for a sustainable food future. One possible way forward is insects. We're here at one of the largest insect food producers in the world to find out how close we are to an insect-based future. We are here at Insects Research Lab, about to go and see where they do all the research and development for their insect production. We need insect food because we, we need alternative protein today. We have to, to face this growing of population and the need of animal protein. I think it's necessary to change our practice to, to eat less meat. This is Benedict Lorette, the chief scientist at Insect, who explained to me the work they're doing to optimise the insect's growth and turn them into products that, ultimately, we might want to eat. So here we are in the lab for the nutrition part. What is done is the feeding of the larvae. Here what you can see is the buffalo insect. It's the smallest insect that we have. Here it's only the rearing of insects. Margot fed them with the vegetal substrate because we need to give them feed at different frequencies. And then when they have reached a certain size, we will be able to process them to have our ingredients. We work uh, mainly on two aspects, the rearing part, so the best condition for uh, rearing our insects. And here in this lab, we are uh, working more in the development of ingredients. Insect currently produces insect-based feeds for plants and animals, but it recently received the green light from the EU for making products from the lesser mealworm, a beetle larvae, for human consumption. It's now preparing an arsenal of proteinous flours, bars and shakes, as well as cooking oil to hit European shelves. And it hopes it can come up with even more, replacing a whole range of animal-based products. We already produce some burgers from insects, so as meat analogues. We have also uh, some uh, trials to use insect meal to replace flour, for example in bakery, without animal protein, dairy or uh, eggs protein. Now that's all very well in the lab, but how do you go from a tray of mealworms to feeding a population of 8 billion? This is how you feed 8 billion people. This is Insect's pilot factory, where insect processing is tested at an industrial scale. It's 3,000 square meter, 15 meter high. What you saw in that plant today, basically, is the full life cycle of the insects coming from the, the eggs to the final product. We have a pool of adult insects. They are giving eggs. We are hatching the eggs. We are making sure that the small larvae coming from the eggs are on the optimal feed, water, and temperature condition. Then we are looking at them growing. Behind me, they're harvesting the insects that have been grown in there for 90 days. Soon, if all goes according to plan, they're going to open an even bigger factory than this. It will take up 16 football pitches, be 40 meters high, and create 300,000 tons of food every year. The alternative protein won't be alternative protein in the, in the future. Microalgae, plants-based, etc., and insects, of course. But is it a case of build it and they will come? At present, insects are only consumed in a few parts of the world. Making them a regular part of our diet could take some convincing. If you go to Asia, if you go to Mexico, people are eating insects and this is normal. So today, it's a little bit, yeah, the, the mind because of the aspect of the insect extra. It's a part of the solution. I'm not saying that we will change everything, but this is necessary and this is a part of the, the way we have to take to, to move forward. A huge part of the appeal of shifting to an insect-based diet is that it could massively reduce carbon emissions and become part of a more sustainable way of living. An insect farm can emit 40 times less carbon and use 98% less land than a farm producing beef. We are using each part of the insect, so we have a zero waste uh, process. We produce uh, our ingredients through a circular model. It means that we use byproduct of cereal for feeding our insects. We have a vertical farming, so we use less space than a traditional animal farming and also less water. That's the point here. I mean, it's an animal protein, but with a very, very low impact. The long-term vision is to build a lot of factories. If you want to have an impact on what you are doing in the earth, and we have a positive impact, it won't be done with one factory. So our plan is to build at least 10 plants before 2028. I think it's essential yeah, to change our way of consuming protein and to go on alternative solution. So it's all this solution which will load uh, the world to thrive and we are a part of it.